until Samsung introduces its next big flagship, the S25, we probably have a few months left. For those out there thinking about upgrading though, comparing the S24 Ultra with the expected Galaxy S25 Ultra specs will help you fairly decide whether to start saving for a new phone now or wait for another generation. Now's the ideal time to compare the S25 Ultra with the current flagship since it's expected to launch early next year. Although the S24 Ultra ranks highest among all Samsung phones, the question is whether the S25 Ultra will have sufficient fresh features to inspire consumers to consider shelling over the money to upgrade to a new phone. To examine how the Galaxy S25 Ultra stacks against the Galaxy S24 Ultra, we have collated all the rumors and leaks that have so thus far surfaced below. If history holds, we will see the Galaxy S25 Ultra hit stores somewhere in early 2025, maybe in January or February, but it is too early in the rumor cycle to determine exactly when it will arrive. With a Galaxy Unpacked event on January 17 and the S24 variants arriving two weeks later on January 31, this year's Galaxy S24 release was the earliest in the history of the flagship thus far. Rising from the Galaxy S23 Ultra's $1,199 price tag, the S24 Ultra likewise saw a price increase over its predecessor, now at $1,299. That price might rise even more for the S25 Ultra, according to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who says the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 expected to run the next flagship could influence the phone's price. But for now, nothing more specific has surfaced. The Galaxy S24 Ultra already offers a big 6.8-inch screen, but the S25 Ultra could expand it up slightly. Noted leaker Ice Universe revealed back in August that the forthcoming S25 Ultra will feature a 6.86-inch display. Not a major difference, but one that puts it in sync with its competition, Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max. What's notable about the larger screen is Samsung's tip to shave down the flagship's bezels, decreasing the phone's total dimensions despite the bigger display. The same source indicated the S25 Ultra will be 77.6mm broad, a small dip from the 79mm width found on the present S24 Ultra. We've also heard claims that Samsung is switching to rounder corners for the S25 Ultra and ditching the squared-off corners its Ultra phones have featured since the S22 Ultra. Between the curvier shape, thinner bezels, and narrower frame, the S25 Ultra should be a bit easier to hold for long periods than its predecessor. The Galaxy S24 Ultra scores well on our list of the top camera phones, including a main 200 megapixels main, a 12 megapixels ultra-wide camera, a 10 megapixels telephoto lens with a 3x optical zoom, and a new 50 megapixels telephoto camera with a 5x optical zoom. Early S25 Ultra camera estimates suggest we could be in for some modest modifications, with the ultra wide lens going from 12 megapixels to a 50 megapixels sensor on the 2018 flagship. The 200 megapixels main camera, 12 megapixels selfie camera, and 50 megapixels telephoto cameras are expected to remain unmodified, though they could receive some under the hood modifications that provide for a smoother user experience. Rumor has it the telephoto lens on the S25 Ultra will acquire variable capabilities that may feature fixed focal lengths between 4 to 5x zoom and then again between 6 to 7x zoom, hence accelerating the process when capturing video. Another claim indicates Samsung may drop the second telephoto entirely, leaving the S25 Ultra with three camera lenses instead of four. Given the use of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in the S24 Ultra, odds are the S25 Ultra will sport a Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 CPU. Qualcomm has previously said we'll be seeing the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 in October, which ties up with an early 2025 release for Samsung's flagship series. Another reliable report claims that the S25 Ultra might feature faster UXF 4.1 speeds, which would boost the phone's performance even more. RAM capacity could also receive a raise, going from the 12 gigs found on the current Galaxy S24 Ultra to 16 gigs with the Galaxy S25 Ultra. That would make it more able to manage multitasking and addressing Galaxy AI inquiries. Speaking of AI features, odds are the S25 Ultra will add more once it debuts, similar to what we saw with the S24 range, but there's no indication yet on what those could be. 
In terms of battery life, the Galaxy S24 Ultra already landed on our top phone battery life list with its 5000 mAh cell capable of lasting around 17 hours in our battery testing. Rumors indicate the S25 Ultra could keep the same 5000 mAh battery and 45 watt charging speeds. It's still a bit early to tell definitively whether you should consider upgrading to the Galaxy S25 Ultra when it comes out. Based on what we know so far, the hardware enhancements over the S24 Ultra appear minimal. But Samsung could have some fancy new tech or AI-powered features up its sleeve to sweeten the price. Given that Apple came out as the clear frontrunner in our iPhone 16 Pro Max and S24 Ultra face-off, Samsung has a lot of ground to cover with its next flagship phones. We should learn more about what to expect from the S25 Ultra as we move closer to launch. But in the meantime, it may be worth holding off on upgrading for now. Now the Galaxy S25 Ultra versus the S25 Plus. We may easily consider 2024 as good as over when it comes to major device releases. Everyone is already looking towards 2025. And among the first that will test the waters is Samsung, which will introduce its S25 lineup first thing next year. The range will consist of the enormous S25 Ultra, the mid-sized S25 Plus, and the small S25. The two larger phones are clearly the most exciting, however it's quite inevitable that the Galaxy S25 Ultra is the more loaded flagship. How will it stack up against the S25 Plus? Let me clarify. First, design and size. It's entirely normal not to expect any substantial changes with the S25 Ultra design, but all reports point out that we might actually be getting a modest design upgrade. While the most previous Galaxy S Ultra phones so far have employed largely straight edges with 90-degree corners, the S25 Ultra could have rounded edges at the top and the bottom of the frame, like the S20 Ultra, for example. This will make it fall in line with the other two flagships in the range, which will likewise adopt such a rounded design. That's not always a negative thing, as the edgy appearance of prior Galaxy S Ultra devices certainly gave off that trademark business look that stuck out. The titanium-clad S25 Ultra might apply thinner bezels in comparison with the Galaxy S25 Plus, which will deliver it very appealing overall look. The Galaxy S25 Plus might miss that design adjustment and arrive with conventional screen bezels. It's safe to presume that the S25 Plus will look like the S24 Plus. The rumor mill thinks we should not expect any substantial modifications, other for a slightly smaller 7.3mm body, in contrast to the 7.7mm one on the S24 Plus. A more compact gadget is always good, especially when it doesn't come at the expense of battery reduction. And it looks Samsung is keeping the battery size unchanged. We also expect the S25 Plus cameras to adopt a ring design that reminds us of the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which could offer it a classy look, but won't impact the entire experience too much. The omnipresent S Pen will be available on the S25 Ultra as well, although the Galaxy S25 Plus won't get this additional. Both the Galaxy S25 Ultra and Galaxy S25 Plus will adopt the same flat design style with a single display punch hole for the camera. IP68 water and dust resistance will be featured on both the Galaxy S25 Plus and S25 Ultra. No extra buttons here, these are not iPhones. As for display differences, the Galaxy S25 Ultra will come with the same 6.8-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X screen like its predecessor. It will undoubtedly obtain the smooth 1 to 120Hz refresh rate, as well as the beneficial anti-reflective coating which lowers glare. We think that one area in which the S25 Ultra might get a raise is the peak display brightness, where most flagships these days compete. There won't be any modifications to the S25 Plus display spec sheet as well. It will come with a 6.7-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display at the front with HDR support, QHD Plus resolution, and super smooth 1 to 120Hz refresh rate. We hope that Samsung extends the anti-reflective coating to this one as well, as it will increase the screen legibility a lot. Performance-wise, despite the reports that Samsung would shift to MediaTek for its future flagships, we still expect the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 to tick and click within both of these Samsung flagships. Interestingly, Samsung has already done that with the Galaxy Tab S10, which comes with MediaTek Dimensity CPUs on deck.
One of the reasons for Samsung contemplating MediaTek's products is a tiny but essential one, cost cutting. Apparently, Qualcomm has been increasing the cost of its flagship chips, thus Samsung is obviously in the right to examine its choices. Yet, there's a sort of proof that Qualcomm's next chip will be found inside the S25 family. A S25 Plus with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 for Galaxy has been allegedly been benchmarked with pretty impressive performance, hinting at a performance that might rival the iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max flagships. Both phones will presumably arrive with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 and 512 gig storage choices. The Galaxy S25 Ultra will get a 1TB version as well. We foresee considerable upgrades to Galaxy AI. Samsung is among the largest phone makers with AI solutions that are presently out on smartphones and available to regular consumers. Um, Apple. We are very convinced that Samsung would increase the capabilities of Galaxy AI with the Galaxy 25 series, and we can't wait to see what route it takes. Seeing that the Galaxy S24 Ultra is now sitting near the top of the camera score test, holding its own very well against both the iPhone 16 Pro Max and Pixel 9 Pro XL opponents, we are very happy with Samsung's camera performance lately. With that in mind, we don't expect big alterations in the hardware or software settings of either the Galaxy 25 Ultra or the Galaxy S25 Plus. What does this mean? Expect the same 200 megapixels primary camera, 50 megapixels telephoto with 5x zoom, 10 megapixels 3x telephoto, and 12 megapixels ultra wide to make the rounds. Yes, thanks to software advancements, they might produce somewhat better photographs and movies, but you are unlikely to notice a substantial difference if you're coming from a Galaxy S24 Ultra or even an older Galaxy S Ultra flagship, to be honest. There are some reports that Samsung might abandon the specialized 3x telephoto camera and just rely on sensor cropping to imitate the 3x zoom, but those aren't particularly convincing. Meanwhile, the S25 Plus will likely arrive with a 50 megapixels main camera, a 12 megapixels ultra wide, and a 10 megapixels 3x telephoto, exactly like its predecessor. Software and algorithm enhancements are likely to adorn the mid sized smartphone as well. We will undoubtedly run the new phone through the paces of our new camera test, where it will clash at its most renowned opponents. The rumor mill has claimed that the batteries on both the Galaxy S25 Ultra and S25 Plus will not be modified in comparison with their predecessors. Thus, we are receiving a 5000 mAh ad 4900 mAh in the Galaxy S25 Ultra and S25 Plus, respectively. That's not a bad thing. If the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 chip proves to be more efficient, those batteries will give superior battery life, all things considered. When it comes to charging, both will have 45 watt cable charging and Samsung's 15 watt rapid wireless charging. There is no mention of a hypothetical upgrade, which would add MagSafe like capabilities to the Galaxy flagship, allowing you to snap charging peripherals to the rear thanks to the magic of magnets. Samsung will be offering us more of the same with the Galaxy S25 Ultra and the Galaxy S25 Plus, and that's not awful. After all, Samsung has been figuratively killing it with its flagship in the past several years and obviously feels very comfortable providing consistently outstanding phones, possibly the best Android ones you can get your hands on. As to which one should you choose, that's all up to your size and feature needs. The Galaxy S25 Ultra will be the more feature-rich phone, with more head-turning things to it that will make it that much more premium than the S25 Plus, but will also be pressure in comparison. So let us know what you think in the comment area. As always, see you tomorrow. Peace out.